artificial inflation in zombies is a pandemic. <laughs> Over the years, the task to create more innovative, more challenging, more exciting maps has resulted in an exhausting and unachievable race to the top to make each zombies map better than the last. To try and push Call of Duty Zombies to its limits, all three developers have been forced to use every single trick up their sleeve to create some of the most interesting, enjoyable experiences over the years with some equally frustrating and tedious ones. This is what Alcatraz is doing, it's making us go crazy. We're literally going insane like No, this, this game is making us crazy. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. And all the f***ing blue screens. Yep. Well, how- Oh my god. Oh they just bled out. Oh my god. Does that end the challenge, or...? No. It's gonna make it much more difficult, though. Oh my goodness. But over the course of 40 Zombies experiences, after playing all the different iterations over the past 10 years and three developers, Zombie starts to feel a little stale. A staleness that players can feel inside the gameplay, artificially increasing the difficulty. Simply put, artificial inflation changes an in-game task under the guise of making it more challenging, when in reality, it's making it arbitrarily longer. The developer's goal in implementing these tricks is to try and give players a fuller experience. But does it really make things more challenging? Does it really make the game more enjoyable while giving us more things to do? And does this actually impact the gameplay experience in a positive way? Today, we're going to answer those questions and more on today's episode of The Main Thing. Black Ops 4 has suffered from the worst artificial inflation in any zombies experience to date. With that said, no zombies experience is without artificial inflation. The difference is, over the years, the ability to enjoy these implementations of artificial inflation has changed. The mantra once touted by former studio head Mark Lamnia, follow the fun, has seemed to have vanished in recent maps in Call of Duty Zombies. For every example I bring up in today's episode, I want you to ask yourself, is this fun or is this tedious? But fun is subjective! Correct, shouting face. That means artificial inflation exists on a spectrum that will cause different players to lose, quote unquote, the fun at different points on the spectrum. Some players do not mind waiting around to perform the next step on an Easter egg, while other players will be infuriated that they have to end the round to continue the Easter egg, causing zombies to get tougher, forcing them to juggle with an onslaught of the horde while dealing with new hoops to jump through. It's too much. I personally draw my line in the sand at this basic idea. Could I complete this task? If this artificial barrier wasn't in place, purposely slowing things down, aka, is this tedious or fun? Wow, Reed, you just want the game to be easier. No, I don't. The fun can mean being challenged. Boss fights are great examples of fun, challenging steps. It is you versus the boss mechanics. Learn it and go. Not wanting artificial inflation doesn't mean I want Guy milling enables while I one hit zombies and kill Ryan Fingy like a cute gamer. Again, no, what I mean is this example. Take the final rank. Great map. I enjoy it in World War II zombies. Do you remember the step where you have to press square to get these wind chimes to the correct settings? Well, I certainly do as it haunts my dreams. This task comes after you figure out the whole puzzle for the step. Before inputting the code multiple times, you need to kill a Brenner, run around the map to find paintings, reveal secret codes on the paintings with the Brenner's head, remember the codes, and then input them into this device. The puzzle is over. The fun of the challenge is over. All that's left is to input each of these into the device uh, four, three, five, two times. It's just, I mean, it's, it's not that hard. It's really, hey, you son of- oh! 
The task of inputting the code is artificially inflated when zombies are attacking while you're just trying to input a few numbers. Newsflash! Zombies attacking you is the whole game. True. But during every Easter egg step ever, when you are inputting something, what do you want? A second to focus. In multiplayer, you have the luxury of screaming at your teammate to hold those zombies. In solo, you are forced to burn your precious consumables as the hungry microtransaction overlords rejoice at your frustration and spending of money. Slowly input each button over the course of the next few minutes because the last zombie is super sprinting up your butt. That one zombie is going to down you less frequently than a kicker misses the extra point attempt in the NFL. All sorts of incredible plays along the line for the Saints to stay alive pending the extra point by John Carney. And he missed. No! To me, this process isn't fun. What's the difference in letting the player just input the code normally without some zombie attacking them like a rabbit raccoon in your backyard? Why punish the player after they've solved your puzzle? What possible other option do we have design-wise? Well, I have a couple ideas. In a previous video, I made a whole discussion about the importance of crawlers you can check out in the description. What they alleviate are these situations of artificial inflation of difficulty. Getting a crawler that doesn't bleed out gives players a chance to input the damn code in for a few seconds. Gets them back to the fun, gets them back in the fight. Even Moon had a fairer input system for solo players and it had crawlers available to you, but you didn't need them. But you know what else crawlers allow? The ability for players to thoroughly immerse themselves in these Easter eggs, whether they are the biggest puzzles in the map or the most interesting side quests. If I was a developer, I would want people to play and enjoy the features I spent months of my life programming away, months my artists spent designing, months my whole team spent making for some ungrateful, godforsaken YouTuber to like. I would want people to enjoy the game in a way that sticks with them. One of the unintentional consequences of adding artificial inflation to the game is the resulting loss of immersion. Exo zombies, IW zombies, Black Ops 3 zombies, Black Ops 4 zombies all suffer from this in varying degrees of intensity. Exo zombies and BO4 being some of the worst cases. Some of the most vivid memories I have playing Call of Duty zombies ever were the ones where I'm sitting, listening to the quiet ticks of the clock in Doris, the whispers of Shino Numa, the ringing of the ambience in Shangri La while there was a long pause in the action. Do any of you share that feeling? I'm not saying that this is my favorite memory in Zombies, no. But what I'm saying is these items stuck with me over the years. I can hear less than five seconds of ambience and know what map is being played and all the memories I associate with that map in a moment because I had the ability to listen to the map through crawlers or create a pause in the action in older maps. I could take in the surroundings, have a moment to think about the puzzles without worrying about some consumable running out. None of that exists in these modern games. It doesn't matter what the map looks like or sounds like because all you're doing is constantly running. You never have a chance to enjoy what is around you. None of those moments can happen when you have a super sprinter smashing you upside your head after you figure out the right order to put the levers in and voyage of despair. God dang it. I understand there is an argument saying doing these tasks with the zombies is the challenge, you dodo bird. First. Are the challenges or Easter eggs so shallow or uninteresting that they can't stand against the use of a crawler? That they're not challenging or engaging without being under fire constantly? Hit your mark is one of the most fun steps in Black Ops 4. It isn't the hardest step, but it's fun because it lets you focus and engage with what is happening here and now in the game. Second, does having zombies attacking you make the quest or task more fun? Sometimes the answer to this question will be yes, but other times it's a strong no. To me, the instances where you input a code, like in the World War II step, like in the Voyager's Spare Lovers, and like in the Shall and Shuffle Morris code, all demonstrate that it does not affect the player's ability to complete the outcome. It only elongates the game they're playing because the task is tedious, not fun.
artificial inflation isn't just button inputs. Think about how buildables have evolved. Slowly this series went from remembering a few parts and a few locations to remembering hundreds of locations, parts, and steps to function on all the maps inside Black Ops 4. Do you think I'm exaggerating saying hundreds? Let's take it the surface level of a few Black Ops 4 key locations that you need to remember to play the map off the top of my head. In Dead of the Night, to get silver bullets and the shield, you must remember 20 locations between all the parts and the two benches. In Blood of the Dead, you have 40 locations to memorize to find the seagull for the Easter egg step. Ancient Evil has 20 locations for the dormant hands. Nine has 12 skull locations to start the Easter egg and nine different stones that hide outside and around the map for another step. There are 20 locations for the tagged your toe in Apothecon Blood. There are seven symbol locations with three tally scratches associated with those possible seven symbol locations in three possible locations that go along with each scratch symbol for an easter egg step inside dead of the night and so on with shields equipment easter egg steps and other basic gameplay functions i can sit here all night naming all these items that you need to pick up that spawn in three or 40 different locations if you want to complete certain easter eggs or gameplay mechanics but i'm not going to do that how does having 20 different locations for an item make the game more fun or challenging it doesn't. It just makes the game longer. You have to check all these spots to get the same exact end result you could have received when you have checked the very first spot. And that's just RNG. Players aren't playing anymore due to artificial inflation. They are stuck in game crafting to set up playing instead of just jumping into the game and playing like in previous maps. Playing zombies is now preparing to play zombies it's so bad that players have to sit through agonizingly long guides on youtube besides for glitch to learn how to do anything even some of glitches easter egg guides require you to watch 15 minutes worth of material with 10 minutes of other supplementary explanations and other videos within the description. You can find it in this video I'm going to be showing you how to unlock pack a punch bound in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a shield in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a shield in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a shield in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a shield in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a shield in this video Hi guys Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. It is completely out of hand for something that is adding nothing positive to the experience. One of the most disappointing evolutions of buildables is the shield. What was a staple for zombie maps has become the newest crutch in zombies. Black Ops 4 is nearly unplayable to the average player without a shield. With super sprinters being commonplace in early rounds, not having a shield is an easy death sentence. Every game, players are forced to build the shield so they don't get instantly killed with one wrong turn. It utterly wastes players' time to rebuild the shield every single game and every time it breaks. Nothing changes. It is the same result. It breaks, you waste time running back to press square if you don't do it you'll die within minutes there has to be an adjustment made to the shield implementation get rid of it entirely or have it add more to the gameplay outside of easter egg steps many of these examples thus far are barriers to fun you can't just play zombies anymore because you must know all the locations of parts to have a fighting chance inside the game the final example I have of artificial inflation inside zombies is a requirement to end rounds to start the next step of an Easter egg or in-game rewards. It kills the flow of the fun when you have to wait three rounds and nine for poop to literally fertilize. I shit you not, pun intended. This coincides with the decision to force players to trade the Hell's Retriever away for monkey bombs only to require the Hell's Retriever again for a future step. The same example applies on Moon, needing both the QED and Gersh for steps, forcing players to sit, rolling the box until RNG grants them the greatest gift they have ever received, the ability to move on. The quick fix for these RNG required items in quests have been implemented allow side quests to get the, these required rng items or make them viable blood of the dead got that right with the monkey bomb uh, mostly only they force you to go buy it again from the box if you want a monkey bomb when you go into the boss fight 
So is all artificial inflation bad? Are boring ass escort steps bad because they are slow and have zombies being thrown at you? Not necessarily. Let's look at two examples. The first being Dead of the Night, where you have to slowly walk with a stone that will stop in place if you get too far ahead. It forces players to slow things down, forcing players to kill more zombies, which causes the rounds to be pushed up artificially, making the game harder as the rounds tick by through no fault of your own. It doesn't reward crafty players. You're forced into this situation. Check out most first time Easter egg completions. Players end up in the 30s and 40s trying to jump through Easter egg hoops because of this artificial inflation. That doesn't make for a fun experience. Well, read what does then? How about the escort mission in Blood of the Dead? How is that any different, you might say? The step isn't about punishing players for doing it. You experience a great display inside the map while players are empowered for kicking zombies ass. There is a clear experience happening above the normal chaos of killing zombies during this step with a slight challenge. You feel empowered in this escort mission instead of annoyed. So what you're saying is you want things easy. No, 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 I'm not. Let's look at ExoZombies Descent. An actual challenging step is the platforming step. It is a frustrating but challenging step. Maybe one of the platforming jumps goes a bit too far, but let's ignore that one. It is an original idea for testing players for their skill. No zombies are slapping you as you try to make these pain in the ass jumps. That's good skill design. In Voyage of Despair, you learn what ice to destroy as you become surrounded by zombies after the planet step. There is a spectacle transpiring around you while crafty players are rewarded when using the right weapons at the right instances as they race to the back of the ship. All hell is breaking loose, but the gameplay is complementing the Easter egg as players move forward. You will never find a player rewarded for running a zombie in a circle correctly in their efforts to input a code. A great example of a step having and lacking artificial inflation is the planet step in Voyage of Despair. You can turn to interact with the model as many times as possible before making your choice to shoot down those planets in the sky. The key is figuring out the planet symbol locations, finding the model, memorizing the order, and shooting them down at a time to collect the wisp. But the solar player gets screwed because they can't keep rewatching the solar system model without that annoying zombie forcing them to look away, unless they record it. Again, forcing the game to go longer, only because of this tedious need to train the zombie. Zombies flood the players while they try to pick up the wisp before it disappears. Does this really need to be a 24 zombies rushing the location to make it harder on players? I don't think so. That added 24 zombies on top of doing all these challenge is just for the sake of forcing players to do the step over and over again until the zombies don't block the way in front of the wisp. Soul boxes are a great example of the pros and cons of artificial inflation. A little bit of soul boxes, not so bad. But when the numbers start getting higher and higher, it's artificially making the game quote unquote harder when it's just wasting your time killing more zombies, driving the rounds up. Artificial inflation gets so ridiculous in the Nine Gauntlet, which is meant to be completed as fast as possible. The mode has a timer on screen. During the Gauntlet, there is a round where you survive for nine minutes. Nine minutes. You were forced to play the game like normal for nine minutes. If that's what Treyarch thinks is a challenge, I think that tells you a lot about the fun of the game. Some would call this process filler. Voyage's gauntlet forces players to use the Essex rifle on round 27. This process is the definition of tedious. These tasks only prove you have time and patience, which is the nuance of the argument. Is it challenging and fun if something is a test of patience rather than skill or cleverness? I firmly believe patience and time in zombies, by and large, is a time-wasting proposition. What is the difference between completing the Easter egg at round 50 or 150 in classified? Internet connection, focus, your time, and commitment. At what point? During the 20 hours you've spent using an exploit or training, do you start having more fun or does it make the game more enjoyable? It doesn't. Artificial inflation does not follow the fun. There you have it. For the most part, my thesis on artificial inflation. This video is running a bit too long for me and my editors, so we'll have to cut this conversation short here, but maybe I will continue this in a part two. 
artificial inflation mostly sucks, but it can work when you're rewarding players during your experience, when you're putting them on display or you're focusing on following the fun. When artificial inflation works, it doesn't grind the gameplay to a halt or make these jam-packed maps inside Black Ops 4 feel horribly tedious. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Mainframe. Every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we upload a new episode. So make sure you're subscribed so you never miss one. Leave a rating and a comment so the YouTube algorithm can do well with these videos. And tell me, do you even notice artificial inflation? Does it even bother you? i like to know that in the comments down below. Thank you to our wondrous Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. Consider supporting us on the Patreon uh, linked in the description down below. And we have a brand new poster coming out soon. We will be selling it before Resident Evil 3 drops, but it is a tribute poster to the Resident Evil remake series. Since I fell in love with Resident Evil 2, and I'm excited for Resident Evil 3. You can check that out at radrendering.com, and you can still buy Ether posters there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and be safe until I see you on the next episode of The Maze.